This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. If you click on the link in the description below, it'll take you to their store and they'll know I sent you there. Alright, before I jump into another Kaldheim draft, I want to remind everyone that my content is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by clicking on the link in the description below on YouTube or the logo below on Twitch. You can get Kaldheim, you can pre-order Time Spiral Remastered. Uh, there's all kinds of sweet stuff on their, on their, in their stores, so check them out. So Cosmos Charger is pretty good. It's a good rare that I think you take over most commons and uncommons in the set. Um, you know, makes Fratel better, and it just has good stats on its own. Basalt Ravager is also something you can first pick. It usually does like two, and that's plenty. Uh, and then there's Narfi, who's a hugely powerful snow build around. Um, if you can make him work, you do need a lot of snow to make him work. But if you can, you know, he just comes back forever and ever and ever. And also happens to pump like a quarter of your deck. So it's an interesting pick because Cosmos Charger, I think, is definitely worse than Narfi. But it's also monocolored, and it requires a lot less effort to make it work. Um, and so that's what I think I'm looking at. I think I'm looking at Charger versus Narfi here. I think in the end we take the Charger. Like, Narfi's good, but he's not so much better than the Charger that I think taking it there, like, is the definite right pick or anything. We could have used these in that last deck. Morning Sloth. Okay, so... I think we're looking at Inga or Port of Carfell here. Port of Carfell's pretty great. You know, all these utility lands are. But I think I take Inga over it. She's been pretty nice. I mean, her scry smooths out your draws while her death trigger effect often makes your opponent have to play the game differently. Uh, and I think I like both of those things. So, yeah, we'll take her. We could consider a random snow land, snow duel. And if it weren't the black-white one, I probably would. But it, since it is the black-white one, I think we go with Inga there. There's another uh, black-white one. Okay, so I think it's either Usher of the Fallen or Mask Vandal. I think I like the Usher a little more. I mean, you know, Blue-White isn't the best aggro deck in the format, but you can definitely build a Blue-White aggro deck in this format. Um, you know, it's more of a flyer aggro deck generally, but uh, yeah. Mask Vandal is nice because it blows up so many different things. Again, we could consider a Snowland. Uh, Ice Eye Troll's good too, but you kind of have to be heavy snow to make him work. So I'm going to take the Usher here. Okay, so, you know, King Narfi's Betrayal is pretty good. I don't think it's great. I mean, a lot of the time it basically amounts to a really slow divination, basically, uh, that has a narrow window in which you can use the spells. I'm not saying it's unplayable, uh, but I am saying, like, um... It's not amazing, you know. It's a solid playable and not much more. I'm kind of leaning towards Squash here. Uh, if you can get Giants, it's really good. So far, obviously, we don't have any. But, you know, we do have two good blue cards. We could end up in the Giant deck. You know, I like the Lindworm too, but I like Squash a little bit more. Even if you get no Giants and you play red, it's pretty good. And it's pretty hard to get zero Giants if you're playing red. So, I think it's what we take there. There's another Inga. It's also a Yara Mirror Lake, which is another really good utility land. There's also a snow-covered island. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards the Mirror Lake. I mean, we have to end up blue-green to really use it, but I do think it's better than everything else in this pack uh, by a fair bit. You know, I don't hate Gold Knot Champion. Um, you know, it can be especially good in, like, a flyer deck. But And Bind the Monster is an okay but not great removal spell. But I think we take the Mirror Lake as a really high ceiling. Like all those utility lands, it can do some sweet stuff. Okay, so here's a Feed the Serpent. Um, you know, as I've said, you know, this card is worse in this format than in most. Partly because black's bad, and partly because there's so many commons in this set that are two-for-ones or have powerful into the battlefield abilities that it's really diminished. All that said, it's still a pretty good card, and I think it is probably what we take here. Um, you know... It's less good than normal, but it's still one of the, you know, 10 best commons or so in this format. And it's certainly better than everything else in this pack. So, <laughs> it's what we're going to take. Ooh, that's a pretty late Realm Walker. I mean, you do have to end up in a relatively, you know, like one creature type heavy deck to really utilize Realm Walker. Uh, but, you know, it's pretty good. 
And I think it's probably what I'm going to take here. Certainly Frostpire isn't the worst thing either. It's not really clear what is super open at this point, though I kind of feel like Realm Walker still being here might mean green is. Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to go with the Realm Walker here. See what happens there. Dream Devourer isn't amazing, but uh, it's not terrible either. And it might kind of just be what we want to take here. I mean, giving all your stuff for Tell is nice. Um... You know, that's it's not bad upside. Uh, Gold Maw Champion is serviceable, so is Kin Seekers. But I do think Dream Devourer is probably just the best card here. It's not, like, amazing. Hi, Nate. Uh, but, you know, I think it's what we take there. Okay, so I might grab this Infernal Pet here. Um, you know, it's a decent double spell payoff. It's not the one you're desperate for, but it's decent enough. Oh, yeah, I didn't really think about Charger plus Deem Dream Devourer. That's true. It is pretty sweet. Okay, so the question here... Man, it makes me wish I'd taken that Narfi, because it does feel like blue-black is reasonably open. Um, Gold Maw Champion's pretty good. Um, and there may be more that wheel. And so I don't hate taking it. It's probably what I take here. I like Skull Raid and Draugr Thought Thief okay, but I think Gold Maw Champion's just better than them. Um... Its boast trigger is surprisingly useful. Uh, I think we'll take Elder Fang Disciple here. You know, Dusk Wielder and Wings are, are okay, but I think Elder Fang is better than everything else in this pack. So, okay, so Raven Wings is, you know, surprisingly good. Um, we also have a Guardian Glade Walker. We don't really, you don't really want to end up in black green, but if they're both open enough, I mean, you know, it'll turn out okay, maybe. I think we take Glade Walker over Raven Wings. Okay, so another Gold Mod Champion did wheel, so I'm down with that. And we got a Warhorn Blast late too, which I think we grab. We'd have to end up, you know, in an aggro deck to make it work, but it does do a thing. Late Berserker too. That does incentivize us a little more to put play equipment and stuff. Okay. So interesting. Interesting. Um So the elf deck is pretty bad. You know, we do have uh, a decent number of elves right now. Uh, if you get enough things like Herald, it's not too terrible, though. Um, and if it's open enough, it won't ever be bad. But it's not great. Goldvein pick is pretty strong. Um, you know, it helps set up. Uh, it's good as an equipment, just in general. And then the ability to make treasure is no joke. Uh, Glacial Floodplain, you know, it's a decent snow land. It might help us splash something. Right now, blue seems kind of unlikely to me, though. Uh, as does red, really. I think, you know, we have Cosmos Charger, but yeah. Uh, God, Harold's going to wheel. So I kind of think I'm just going to grab Feed the Serpent number two here. If I really want to be the elf deck, I think Harold will wheel. I guess we'll put this back in because of the Charger. Uh, you know, blue isn't completely done. If we could be an elf deck, you know, having something like Realm Walker that really pays us off for a bunch of elves uh, isn't a bad place to be. So Agar is real strong, and we do have a squash already, so we could think about taking him. Um, you know, our draft isn't doesn't feel like it's headed in that direction right now, but this pack is weak enough. This pack is weak enough that I'm seriously considering taking him. Uh, it does, you know, we would end up jettisoning some significant stuff if we did. Like, you know, maybe I should just take Batter Shield Warrior because it's, you know, in our, one of our main colors right now. Yeah, so. I don't know. I think I'm going to take Agar here and see what happens. I think Agar is strong enough to speculate on. We aren't giving up anything amazing so I'm okay with it. You know, and we do have good blue cards and a squash. So it's not like we have nothing, um, you know, so. Okay, well, look at this pack. So we've got Furia's Retribution, which is really, really strong. Uh, you know, makes an angel, does some other shenanigans. Uh, we've got Poison the Cup, which is really great removal spell. And we have my one of my favorite cards in the set in Bergstrider, uh, which would go in the giant plan. That said, I think it's just the Retribution. We're already kind of going in the direction of Black-White, so I think I'm perfectly happy with taking it here. 
you know, normally one ends up splashing it <laughs> because black white isn't always the best color pair, but uh, yeah. So here's another squash. And what do we give up here if we take if we take something else? I mean, Code Spell Cleric's pretty good for, you know, a low curve deck. Raise the Draugr, you know, having one copy of that's usually pretty good. Um, hmm. I could just take Squash and continue to see maybe if that deck is open, which I don't hate because this pack isn't amazing. Um, but we also have Grizzled Outrider, but I think I'm going to take another Squash. I'm just sort of, sort of testing the waters there. Um, that deck may not be open at all, but you know, so we're not so good at double spelling that I want to take a second Infernal Pet here. I think maybe I want Way Down or Raven Wings. I mean, the first way down is pretty good, and I think I'm going to take it here. Wow, so there's another Narfi. Um, this happens in this format because so many people can play so many colors that you end up with weird, occasionally pretty weird signals uh, where, like, you know, there's a pretty late Narfi, but you're so you're like, that's a really good sign, but, it, you know, we don't have any snow mana yet, so we can't really play him. I think we probably are just an aggro deck and we'll take Stalwart Valkyrie here. I think that the ship has kind of sailed on the potential, like, uh, yeah, I think this is probably where we are, um, right now. Um, and I think we take, do we want an Elder Fing Disciple more than a Coma's Faithful? Probably not. I like the Faithful. Well, we also have Great, Great Hall of Starnheim, actually. I'm actually going to take that. Uh, yeah. This draft, this draft doesn't seem to be going super well. Um, Village Rites, like, if we get enough things, like, uh, Elder Fing Disciple isn't too bad. Um, okay, well, Harold did come back, and we could consider splashing, but there's also a pretty late pick here, and I think we're more interested in the pick overall than, like, splashing green or something. The pick is just going to be really good with several of our cards, um... So our curve's low enough that double spelling is not going to be super hard. Uh, I don't think we want to snow swamp here uh, or raise the Draugr. I think we'd rather have another Infernal Pet. Okay, you know, I don't love Dusk Wielder, but if we end up, like, we're going to have to have the third pack really go in a direction where we get, like, all the um, double spell payoffs, but, you know, it could happen. We'll take a raise here. Verdict is okay removal. It's not the greatest in an aggressive deck, though. It's better if you're the uh, defensive deck. Okay, well. Black is really open. Maybe white really isn't, though. You know? It's, it's been interesting. Um, we could still be black-blue, I guess. Potentially. Uh, you know? I, I could see it happening. Um, I don't think we want another Dusk Wielder super badly. Do we just want the braggart? I mean, he's not awesome, but our other options in this pack are pretty grim. I mean, we could take a Snow Plains, honestly. We do have a Grim Draugr, so it could actually matter a little. We'll take the braggart, though. So what we'd like to see here is like Furia and uh, things like that. More double spell payoffs. So this is a double spell payoff that's pretty good, but I kind of like the Valkyrie more. Um, you know, just, just such an efficient uh, creature with evasion. Um, if I had more double spell payoffs, I'd probably grab something like the Cleric, but he might just wheel too. So we'll take Stalwart Valkyrie. It's also good with Furia's Retribution to have, you know, Angels. We wouldn't mind getting our uh, getting a Master Scald at some point. All right, we take Poison the Cup here. Uh, we do have good removal. Most of it, unfortunately, though, is this like one for one removal, <laughs> which you need, but um, you know, hurts a little bit. So let's play. Uh, let's get Poison the Cup there. It is a great removal spell. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. 
Okay, so Kennel Master as a top curve card is not bad. I think I'd probably take it over a Snow Swamp here. Super kind of late pack mate. Um, but yeah, we'll take the Kennel Master here. Okay, so right now we're not great at abusing Death Knell Berserker. There's a good chance he wheels, I think. And, you know, I think our pick is good with him. Um, Cold Spell Clerics are good with Death Knell Berserkers, too. I think we grab a Cleric here. I think it's more likely the Berserker wheels because people hate black so much in this format. So, yeah. So, I guess we take another Grim Draugr. We currently have zero snow mana, so... Might not, might not pan out, but... Uh... Probably want Gold Mod Champion more than Skull Raid. Yeah. Hey, there's a Furia. Okay. That helps. Okay, so... I think we take Snow Plains here. Um, just picking up a few random Snow Plains will make, like our one snow payoff better, and we're not going to play these, so snow planes it is. Um, do I want another way down more than I want a village rights? Like this deck, how many creatures do we have? We have a lot. I think maybe we do want another way down more than we want snow-covered planes number two. I think we do, yeah. Wither Crown, I mean... We're not going to play it, but, you know, whatever. Dust Wielder. Hey, that Berserker did wheel. Um, he's not going to be amazing in our deck, but we have, I think, two ways to pump him. And, uh, well, three if we count the Kennel Master. He's never going to die, though, if, you know, the Kennel Master's pumping him, so. <sighs> this deck doesn't seem awesome. Um, we could definitely, I mean, we're going to win some games. I don't think it's, like, a complete disaster, but... Um, I do think we, you know, probably weren't in the best lane for the draft, but so we probably just end up cutting our Grim Draugrs. We have one Snow Plains and yeah, I mean, we have plenty of creatures without them. So I think we cut the Draugrs. Also means we can cut our Snow Plains. It's mostly just downside because of Raydane, the like white god. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, this deck could have used a Warhorn Blast, uh, or that Berserker who puts two counters on things and stuff, so. I don't think we want Village Rights in this deck in the end. If we had a bunch of double spell payoffs, I'd be more inclined to play something like Village Rights, but we've really just got, uh, Furia, and we have three Infernal Pets, which isn't terrible, but I'm still not super interested we have enough other ways to trigger double spell things. I feel like the braggart is probably on the outside. Early on in the format, he seemed like pretty good, but I've been kind of disappointed with him uh, for a while. I mean, I don't think he's terrible, but do we lose our disciple? I mean, we're already we already still have a lot of creatures. You know, the disciple is nice to sack to Great Hall of Starnheim and things like that, but would I rather have a disciple than a dusk wielder? Probably. I wonder if we can get away with sixteen lands in this deck. I think we probably can. Yeah, I think we cut a planes. Um, we do need double white, I guess, for Furious Retribution, but we also have the pick. Um, hmm. Maybe we'd rather cut a swamp. We're at eight and eight if we cut a swamp. Yeah, that might just be better. And then, yeah, I think I'd rather have Elder Fang than Dusk Wielder. All right. So, you know, I don't think it's a terrible deck. It's not the greatest one ever either, but, uh, you know, could be worse. Uh, <laughs> we have good removal, which doesn't go as far in this format as most, but we do have it. Uh, and we have some nice aggressive creatures and a few double spell payoffs with a low curve, so... 
Not to mention Furia's Retribution and, like, Five Angels. So, you know. That's nice, because, you know, if you play Furia's Retribution and you don't have that many angels, your opponent blowing up the angel token is kind of frustrating. I mean, it's not a disaster, because it's still a one-for-one -one trade, but it is like, oh man. I don't even get to kill anything. Much less attack with double strike. You know... Hmm. Yo, this is a pretty good hand. Uh, we don't have double white, but the pick can give it to us. But what I was going to say is, we may not want two way downs and two stalwart Valkyries, I realized as this match was loading. We do have a lot of creatures, but we have several cards that want stuff in our graveyard. So I may end up cutting those way downs after this. Because we have raised the Draugr. That means we have five cards that ask for creatures to be in our graveyard. I think even with a bunch of creatures, um, that might not go well. <laughs> so... So we are going to be able to play Retribution on turn four, no matter what. Almost no matter what, I guess. I guess they could make us discard a card or something wacky. Okay, so yeah, I think we play the pick here, equip it to our Berserker. Berserker does love the pick. Okay. Well, we might have a really good start, because if we go uh, Furious Retribution into Carful Kennel Master, like, that might just be game over for our opponent. So we go Kennel Master. Uh, then we attack. And then we tap her to destroy the Raider. How worried are we here? I guess we may as well play around a theoretical board sweeper, given what the board looks like right now. <laughs> so not playing the champion here seems fine. I mean, they are... They only have red mana right now. Okay, they scooped. Let's do that every game. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice if that was our curve every game. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, I forgot about... That game went so well, I forgot about maybe looking at our deck and taking out some of the stuff that wants cards in our graveyards. Yeah, well, that's a mulligan. Okay, this is pretty good. Another Berserker uh, pick hand, and we're going first, so... Um, I think we put back Raise the Draugr. Yeah. Alright, so player Great Hall of Starnheim here, then Berserker, then pick. Maybe we'll just draw our Furious Retribution, you know? Could happen, right? Okay, well, this is going to be another nice little aggro start. I mean, we're not doing anything fancy. We're just like, you know, playing creatures and putting equipment on them. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Valkyrie, Valkyrie after this start isn't too bad. Oh, yeah, and they're a, they're a slow... Oh, my God, we did it again. Okay. <laughs> well... I mean, I'm not complaining. 
So I think we go for it. If they Even if they kill our Angel, we can get a Valkyrie in play that'll gain double strike on the next turn. So, yeah. I think they're going to kill our angel here. I mean, if they play a creature, <laughs> that's not big enough. Yeah. So they play the angel and they get some snow mana back. Too bad it doesn't go to our graveyard, huh? Then we would have been able to play both our, angel our Valkyries. That would have been sweet. Doesn't look like they're utilizing that mana, at least. Okay, so... We definitely attack and then play Valkyrie in Goldmaw Champion. Four, five, six, seven. I mean, I could also sack this. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Is sacking this to get a 4-4... Four, four? And a zombie, and then playing the Valkyrie. Is that worth it? It probably is. Yeah, I think it is. Then we put the pick, I guess, on her, so she's not in demon bolt range. All right, they're probably gonna doom scar us now. It was sweet, but the fact our opponent didn't scoop isn't so sweet. Okay, well, we should still be all right. Even with a squash. This is a weird deck. It's like a snow deck that's playing Tormentor's Helm and stuff. We don't have a creature, right? No. So we're just going to play another Valkyrie. I guess I didn't need to use my treasure there, but could have played my land. All right. All right, turn four, Furious Retribution every game. Let's keep it up. I think we'll win a lot of games when we do that, especially because our deck has so many other angels. Yeah, it does really help when your opponent plays no creatures. It's true. I'm still not sure. That was the one of the weirder decks I've seen in this format where our opponent had, like, snow shenanigans, like, mana for it, but then played, like, a bunch of aggressive equipment and no creatures, more or less. Um, yeah, it was weird. <laughs> their mana looked like a snow deck, but their permanence looked like an aggro deck. Oof. I keep forgetting we need to maybe think about changing these cards because we keep winning. <laughs> 
But this is a bad hand either way. Okay, well, we got to draw really well to uh, make it work, but I do think we keep this hand, and I think we probably... God, I think maybe we put Feria back, given her cost. Yeah. I mean, we could consider sending back a card that's weaker, but that we can cast sooner. But no, I think we put Furia back. Even if she does pair really well with her Retribution, the way her mana looks, we can't really count on that just like working out for us. So, I don't think I want to play the Cleric here. Um, if I had like a pick in my hand, I would have done it, but we don't. So, we'll just hold on to it for later. All right, well, we only have to draw one more land to play our Retribution again on turn four. <laughs> we didn't have nearly as good of a start uh, other than um, the... Uh... Yeah, we didn't have a good start even if we do draw the land for Furious Retribution next turn. Like, in the other games, we've not only had Furious Retribution on turn four, we had our Breakneck Berserker, you know, doing its thing um, early. So so this turn, I think we play Goldmod Champion. If we don't draw a land, I think we probably play... Not probably. We play Usher and Code Spell Cleric. If we draw a land, we play Retribution. Um, yeah. Okay, so... I kind of think I feel okay. Yeah. Do I feel okay offering up a trade here? Maybe. Let's play our Usher. We, I think I do. If we make it a 3-4, uh, yeah. We'll make this a 3-4 and attack with it. They can double block it, but that's it. Okay, Berserker Tribal effect. We still have pretty good attacks this turn, thanks to Gold Maw, even if we don't draw any lands. If we draw lands, um, we probably play Retribution. Uh, all the Gold Maws. Um, yeah, so I think... Do I like attacking with both of these here? I think I do. They can, of course, block the Usher, but yeah. We want to do damage uh, ahead of Furia's Retribution. Um, because that'll give us, you know, close to lethal, basically. So so they do get to, to uh, foretell here. And I do love the Firewalker. It's a nice little common. Well, those wings are going to make our life a little more difficult. Oh, man. Yeah, our inability to draw um, the fourth land this time is rough. We were really lucky in our first two matches, so I can't complain that much. But um, I guess we're going to play a Gold Maw here. We're not going to set up a double spell for Infernal Pet anytime soon, so... Yeah, so I think we block Firewalker here. Yeah, basically drew them two cards. Which is a little annoying. Probably Raven form my champion here. Nope, they'd rather go with Craven Hold. Ouch. Okay, so we continue our struggle. Um, I think we play... I know we play, actually. Uh... <laughs> The, uh, well, I guess if we get raised the Draugr, being able to play that might matter a little more. We already have a champion in play, so. Yeah, it's not looking good. Hey, no snow mana, but it does still tap something down, so, you know. Ugh. Do I just take seven here and hope we draw mana for our retribution? Kind of feel like that's where we are. We did it. Is it too late? Is it better to feed the serpent something? 
I don't know. I probably not. So the bad news is, uh, I'm only going to be able to kill the kin seekers, and if they put the wings on the kin seekers, I won't be able to kill anything. But um, that might be okay. I think we're too late this time, though, with our retribution. Oh, yeah, we're definitely too late. <laughs> yep, that is lethal. Well, it's not quite, actually. I guess we can play this out. Um, I do have to block everything, and I can only kill one of their creatures. That's not so good. Yeah, nah, we're dead. Well, you know, our first two games were insanely lucky, so... If, if we can have two more really good games followed by another game like that one, you know, continue this pattern, we'll take it, so... <laughs> That'll get us to 6-3, and three, actually, right? 2-0... Go 2-1, 2-1, 2-1... Okay, it's a pretty good hand. Got our Dream Devourer. Um, I might actually play on turn two. Rather than my pick. Yeah, I mean... Lines up pretty well here. We could equip it, play, play the pick and equip it next turn if we want to on our Dream Devourer. Um, it's probably just better to play Gold Maw, though. So our opponent, maybe, hopefully their call deck is like ours that we drafted in our last draft where we got all the calls ever. We could have had four of them, but we only had one equipment and one aura. So let's, let's hope that's what we're looking at over here, over there. <laughs> um, I mean, at some point we're probably gonna need to feed the serpent call. Uh, I don't think we're there yet though. So, I'm trying to decide whether I'd like to play the pick here and put it on my champion and or Dream Devourer. Um, I mean, I could just feed here, I guess. That's not the worst plan. Just kill call now. Yeah, I kind of like that plan. Although, also feeding whatever they decide to put their aura on is pretty spicy. Yeah, I think I'll just end the turn. We're going to feed something by the end of their turn. It's just a question of what. I think feeding whatever they try to put an aura on would be good. If it's an equipment, we probably kill Call because equipment lasts forever and we'll keep having that impact. Okay, well now maybe we just kill the braggart. Now I can play Infernal Pet in the pick and double spell, so that's cool, I guess. Yeah, so let's feed the Serpent, the Braggart. Okay, so yeah, I think we go Infernal Pet, Gold Vein pick. And I actually think we attack with the champion, because if they want to block here with Call and the Fearless Pup, um, I think we kill. I definitely should have just attacked first, but, you know, ended up not mattering. 
Um, so if we can draw another cheap spell, we might be able to double spell again this turn. Ah, uh, Tormentor's Helm. May make me wish I killed Call, I guess. Oh yeah, we take six here. So, we don't have a creature in the graveyard, so we can only play one of them. Even with uh, the addition of a token. Uh, we can foretell the other one, though. And that does matter for a Dream Devourer. Uh, oh no, I can't. I'll just be able to play one or the other. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, let's put the pick... On... Gold Maw Champion. And, you know, yeah. Put the pick on Gold Maw. Uh, attack with both of these. Yeah, we're off to the races here, and it's probably not a great race uh, for us, but that is what we're doing. Do I want to move the pick... To, if I move it to Dream Devourer, the Dream Devourer can block Fearless Pup, right? Yeah. I think we move it to the Dream Devourer. Er. <clears throat> Devourer is a weird word. I think we can all agree. <laughs> I think adding more to the board than just foretelling the two Valkyries is better. Even if it does mean I could double spell the next turn, I think adding to the board and doing damage is better than just straight up going for all the damage there. Like, adding the Valkyrie to the board is, is pretty significant right now. Yeah, so we just take this three. If Fearless Pup attacks, I definitely block. Yeah, I mean, they may have run amok or whatever, but I think I'm okay with that. Uh... It seems like a strange attack, doesn't it? Three, six, eight. I mean, I can almost kill them. I'm sure they have something, but... They may have Kaya's Onslaught. Ah, they have their own Valkyrie. But still, I can almost kill them, right? 3, 6, 9, 10. All I have to do is foretell a card and boast, and they're dead. Am I crazy? Because that'll raise his power to 3, 5, 8... Oh, is it only 11 damage? Yeah, if we didn't draw, if we drew another foretell card we could foretell, it would have worked, but I think this is only 3, 5, 8, it's only 11 damage, yeah. Still, no, it's probably better to just play out, um, the Valkyrie. Oh yeah, we want to move the pick, though. But we wouldn't be able to move it back. But it's not a big deal if we can't, I guess. So, yeah. Let's move the pick here. And attack them with everything. And then we're just going to play the Valkyrie. Yeah, if they want to block Goldmaw Champion, I think we allow it. Uh... Yeah. I think if I were them, I'd block the champion, but I'm down with that, too. This only damages me when I block, right? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, 
Ooh, did they decide to just take it? That's probably a better move, honestly, for them. I mean, I don't know what they have in their hand, but it's probably a better move. All right, so we can play our Valkyrie. And we actually can still move the pick uh, to our Dream Devourer, which I don't know if we really need to. We probably do want to move it, but that's probably not where. Um, making this a 4-3 seems better because it could block the 2-2. Two -two. Well, let's hope they don't have Run Amok. Or lots of other scary things. There are several things that can kill us here. Warhorn Blast, etc. Well, I think that probably gets us there. We'll have to see, but... Our Dream Devourer has been kind of useless. I guess he did take down that pup. <laughs> so that's a thing. I mean, they can't be aggressive here unless they can kill me, and they can't kill me, so... Yeah, so, you know, um, they will get the creature back, whichever one we block. I take four, whichever one I block. But it shouldn't matter. Um, well, maybe it does, actually. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Okay. So, yeah, I do think we block the Courser and go to three here. Although if I block the Valkyrie, that does make them use up more mana. But I take... I still take four. Yeah. So they're going to have two blockers. Uh, hmm. I think with the pick, they're dead. Yeah. If I put the pick on my Goldmaw Champion, three damage gets through no matter what. So... We got there, I think. Unless something crazy happens here. But we know they don't have any cards in their hand, so I don't think anything crazy is going to happen. Okay, so let's equip the pick here. Um, Fortel Furia. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Yeah, I think that turn where they, I guess they they either thought that the pup was had four power or I don't know what, where they pumped all that mana into it, lost their creature for no reason. Like that was kind of the turning point there. I make mistakes all the time that give my opponent the advantage, so it's nice to uh, <laughs> it's nice to have it go the other way, you know. Okay, I keep forgetting to change my freaking deck. So far, it hasn't come back to bite us, but it probably will at some point. <laughs> we do keep this. <clears throat> I need to cut probably a way down, I'm thinking, but... 
So far, we've yet to really run into that problem, but it's definitely a problem our deck has, so... You know. Okay, so... I don't hate just trading here. Yeah, we've all been there, for sure. I think we attack here. Yeah, and then we play... I think we want to play Gold Maw more than Infernal Pet. Yeah. Yeah, making coffee with no water is not ideal. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So I think we play the pick. I think we equip the pick. Um, I think we attack. If they block, I can weigh down the other thing. They're probably not going to block, but... Uh, if they do... That means you can play Retribution next turn, so... I think that works for me. It also means they're going to, um... Uh, boast here. Okay, the beatdown is trying to come. Um, do I go more defensive now? Kind of feel like we do, but it's so dangerous against these decks because they always have um, run amok and stuff, which just wrecks us. Um, but... I think, with Furious Retribution and Way Down and stuff, we probably have the late game to beat them. Alright, well, time to find out if that's true. Um, we block there. I think we also block here. Yeah. Yeah. See what they got here. Double run amok would be real bad. Uh, <laughs> Please tell me it's only one run amok. <laughs> oh my god. Oh no. It's not the end of the world thanks to our uh, zombie token and our way down. I mean, we're about to kill a bunch of their board, but... <laughs> but uh, that went pretty ugly. Overall, I'd say. Alright, so... Let's weigh down the Firewalker. Oh, actually, hold on a second. Playing Infernal Pet and then weigh down is way better. <laughs> so we're gonna do that. Yeah. Then, we attack with this. Um, and then we tap it to kill. I guess the pup is more of a problem. The cavalry giving stuff haste is no picnic, but I think I'm okay with it overall. All right, so we may just win next turn now, uh, <laughs> if uh, things go right. That double run amok was rough, but because we had way down and retribution, it meant we could kill a bunch of their board. So yeah, I mean, if we put the pick on our angel next turn, it's lethal. Uh, so they have to find a way to kill our angel or kill us. To not die. Or Retribution, but they only have red mana, so... I don't see that happening. Yeah, so they're basically conceding here. 
Um, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Thank you again for this retribution. Yeah. Furious Retribution, it's, you know, it's gonna happen, you know. Our deck isn't like, I mean, I wouldn't say it's like a, like anywhere close to an A. It's probably like a C plus or a B minus overall, but when you got Furious Retribution <laughs> and you keep getting it all the time, you're gonna win. <laughs> so, you know, too bad we didn't get two. It's actually been a little while. Like, for a while I was drafting... Snow was really open all the time, and I was drafting a lot of snow, but it's been a while. I feel like every deck we drafted... I think we had one snow deck that didn't do super well, but I think most of our decks have been okay. I, is this hand a keepable one? Most of our decks have been aggro other than that. Um, with the Berserker and two Infernal Pets and us on the draw... This isn't an unreasonable keep. Hmm. That said, going down to six, yeah, we probably mulligan. Yeah, this is a lot better. Uh, I guess we send back the Kennel Master just because we need these other things earlier, and the Kennel Master is kind of a, a late game thing. Ooh, so aggro it is. Wow. Well, this time our mana doesn't line up quite as nicely, at least not yet. I guess if we draw planes, it'll be more of the same. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It's been pretty wacky. Uh-oh. Battlefield Raptor aggro. Yeah, I mean this can just this can just end you. And this is part of the reason Feed the Serpent's not great, because it's like way too slow at dealing with this sort of thing. Um, they'll do too much damage to us before we can, you know, do anything about it. Okay, so we did get Furious Retribution mana, which may get us there. Uh, yet another turn four Furious Retribution. But I'm a little scared, so <laughs> we'll see if it does. All right, so I think we block Cole here. If they have, like, uh, Run Amok or something, I think we make them use it. Um, yeah. We're counting on Furious Retribution, yeah. So, them using that just to kill my creature is pretty good news overall, I think. Okay, so we may, if, if uh, this Furious Retribution does what we want it to, we may have a very similar turnaround to that last game where... We untapped, killed one of their creatures with the Angel, and then also used Way Down. Um, and if we draw a fifth land, we can Way Down and feed the Serpent. So we may turn this around if if they can't kill us here. That's that's the, the if here. I think I just take it here, like almost no matter what. Um, I don't think we have much of a chance if we block and she gets blown out by a Run Amok. And we're not dead to Run Amok, so I think we just let it happen. Because we have, what we have to do is get is be allowed to untap, and if we can do that, um, I think we could maybe turn this around. Yeah, I feel pretty good about our chances of turning this around now. Oh wow, and we drew the mana. Oh, except it's not black. It would have had to be black. I know. Find something to complain about, huh? Okay, so... I guess we equip the pick to her. I keep not removing our way downs, but so far it hasn't been us, so maybe maybe that was the right thing, you know? Um, so... The question is here whether I should even bother putting the pick on her. So the bad news is, Call is going to make our lives very difficult. So we actually have to kill him first, now that I sort of uh, assess the board here. So yeah, we're gonna weigh down and kill Call.
Then... I think we equip her with pick. Um, we attack with her. Then we tap her to kill the 3-3. Three, three. And then if they take this hit, I can use uh, Feed the Serpent to kill the other raptor. And I think that's what they're going to do. There's a chance I'm wrong, but um, yeah. Well, if I let them set up the block ahead of time, I wouldn't have been able to play Way Down. I would have had to rely on Feed the Serpent, and that seems a lot more dangerous. Because Way Down is a sorcery. Plus, I want to kill this in a way that they don't get the 1-1 out of it. Um, yeah. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to Feed the Serpent, the Raptor. Oh no, it leaves the battlefield. Damn. Well, I'm less uh, happy about that move, but I think we're still in pretty good shape here. Oh, I get what you're saying. So, another way down. So, this is the first time that's really been kind of painful for us. Um... Neither of these cards are what we want right now, so. So that drops them down to five. This is like <laughs> one of the most lopsided in terms of like how often we've gotten our best card. It kind of makes up for that draft where we had the Four mana, three, four, Flash Angel, and didn't draw it at all, because in this draft, I think we've gotten it literally every game, and we've played it on turn four almost every game. It's kind of insane. But, you know, we're happy to take it. We are finally going to fix our deck a little bit here. <laughs> now that we're five and one, uh, or whatever, maybe we're five and two. But uh, we don't want as many cards in this deck as we have that deal with the graveyard. So, like... We've got the Raise the Draugr, the two Way Downs, uh, and then also two... The Valkyries at least do something if we don't have anything in the graveyard. So I don't think we cut them. Uh, but the Raise the Draugrs and Way Down don't do anything if we don't have something in the graveyard. So I think we probably cut like a Way Down. And do we put in a Warhorn Blast? I mean, it works for this deck okay. Um, I think I like it a little more than the Braggart. So yeah, I think we'll put in a Warhorn Blast here. We are 5-1. and one. That's good. Warhorn Blast plus Double Strike Angels. <laughs> That'd be cool. Alright, this is fine. It's not great, but it's fine. Another aggro deck. Well, we better draw our... Um, Furious Retribution. <laughs> So I think we play our Devourer here. Yeah, that's not awesome. Um, so... I think we play Gold Maw Champion here. And I think we kind of plan on trading the Gold Maw Champion and then way downing the Batter Shield Warrior. Or the Raptor, potentially. Yeah, so, uh... Yeah. Let's block here. They're gonna boast, which isn't awesome for us, but it does set up our way down, and that is pretty good news for us, I think. 
We still kill that. They get a 1-1 back, so, you know, not ideal, but uh, acceptable. Okay, so I think we probably go ahead and weigh down Batter Shield Warrior here. And then, rather than Fortel right now, I think we just play the Berserker. Seems kind of like they've run out of gas, which you don't see happen a lot um, with this de those decks. So, I think I attack with our Berserker here. If we ever get a fourth land, I think we'll be in really good shape. Um, if they try to do something tricky here, we do have Poison the Cup available. I think we just play Gold Maw Champion, though. I mean, I think we just keep playing creatures uh, when we can. I mean, you know, doing damage with Dream Devourer is cool and all, but uh, adding to the board rather than waiting a turn to add to the board is, is preferable, I'd say. Okay, so... Let's attack here with both of these. I'm not going to bother tapping because, you know, if they tried to use a trick... Okay. So we're going to kill that in response here. And we have the mana to use Feed the Serpent, so that's what we're going to do. what their foretold card is. Ah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's not great news. Three, four, five, seven. I mean, they can do a lot on the backswing here. Um, they probably foretell poison the cup and pass the turn. You could use that scry pretty badly. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll pass the turn. We need to kill their stuff and hope they stop drawing spells, basically, is our uh, goal here. So I probably poisoned the cup to Shepherd um, to avoid taking the damage. Yeah. Plus, you know, Scry. Um, so Infernal Pet, you're not great here, buddy. Uh, just because I'm having a hard time. I mean, Warhorn Blast, huh? Yeah, I don't think it does enough right now for us to want the planes either. I think we want to draw something that's not an Infernal Pet or a Plains. <laughs> I think that's what, what we'd like. Oh, now a Plains seems pretty good, doesn't it? So I think we attack here. They can make their Raiders carve into a creature, but we can just kill it with Feed the Serpent. I could also consider... Hmm, maybe I just foretell Furia and Warhorn Blast here. And just brace for a hit. Yeah, let's foretell Furia. We could also do Furia and feed the serpent. I don't hate that. We can't do both next turn, though, so... Hmm. Maybe Infernal Pet's better, though. I don't know. I think it's pretty likely we're going to need to kill something. It depends on how the card's worded. With Sigrid, they worded it in such a way that it, it doesn't work um, the way you would think, basically. So, do we attack with our Dream Devourer? Probably not. Getting Furia down next turn would be nice. Not just because of her double spell thing, but because of um, lifelink. Okay, so... Yeah. 
I'd say we play Furia here. Um, and we don't attack. Can we turn this around now? Maybe. I mean, we're not we're not toast by any stretch, at least. What do you think they do? Crew Raiders carve and then slap Raven Wings on it? <laughs> nah, that's not what happened. Ah, oh, they do crew it, but a little differently than we expected them to. Oh, no, yeah, that is, that's kind of what we expected. Yeah, so, um, I think we just take five here. Okay, so. I think we play our pick here. We could go Infernal Pet pick, but I think we wanna leave up mana for Feed the Serpent. So I think that's what we'll do. Uh, um. Yeah, so I think it's a little too dangerous to attack with her right now. We're just at too low of life. Let's hope they don't have Awaken the Trolls or something to do the last three to us. So they're going to do this again, and this time around I'm going to kill the Raider's Carve with Feed the Serpent. So that problem will be gone. So that'll be nice. Um, yeah, so we'll feed it now. I guess that means they can get flying to something else, but we could have waited till they went to combat um, for sure. Okay, so got six mana. Attacking gains me life, but I can't really afford to do it. <laughs> Because I, I would go up to six, I guess. So maybe I can. Hmm. I probably can. I guess I could even consider an attack with everything here. I don't think we're in that neighborhood yet, though. Take us up to six. Yeah. I'm a little surprised by that. They must have something here. Hopefully Warhorn Blast saves us. Oh, it does. That's pretty gross. We get to gain more life too. Okay, so we go up to eight, we killed that. Furia is now, you know, doing her thing. Uh, yeah, attacking with everything there would have been really nasty, but. It'd be nice to get something so we can double spell here. And we do. Nice. So we play Infernal Pets. I mean, we have... Did we already play our one way down? I guess we did. So there's not much we could draw that we can play. So it may just be worth attacking first. All right, so I think we attack and attack. Yeah. Oh, you're right. I don't have a creature in the graveyard. How sad. Um, still acceptable, but yeah. Yeah. 
sure. Well, oh yeah, we could have done it anyway. Now we can definitely do it, but we could have done it anyway. Because we have other cards that care about cards in the graveyard, though, now we don't have to, um... We don't have to worry about uh, using up our graveyard. We can just cast it the normal way. Which gives us a Furia trigger and an Infernal Pet trigger, yeah. We'll grab the creature. That might help us double spell. I mean, I just feel like we may as well block here. I think this is, in the long run, a race that we're just going to win. Um. Yeah, we're in we're in some pretty good shape here. Um I think because I'm interested in making these triggers happen and playing the usher isn't that big of a deal. I think we actually just foretell the usher here. I guess I can do it like as a trick. Um Yeah, so I think we attack with everything here. If they try to block with their longboat, um, we can tap it with our champion. Because they'll have to make it before blockers, and we'll be able to tap it still by then. Yeah, the question is whether playing the Usher is better now. I don't think so. I think we probably just um, foretell it here to get the two more damage. I guess if they draw Warhorn Blast, we're in a little bit of trouble, but I don't even think that kills us. Yeah, because they'd have to crew the longboat. Hey, look, we won a game without Furia's Retribution. We won instead that time with Furia herself, <laughs> largely. All right. All right, pretty good hand. Um, you know, we do kind of want to draw a third um, land, but even with just two, uh, we can do kind of okay. We could like trade our Berserker and then play the Valkyrie, for example, or whatever. All right, good. Um. Do I think trading our Death Knell Berserker here is worth it? Well, with Way Down, Raise the Draugr and Stalwart Valkyrie in my hand, I might. Yeah. I mean, there's a good chance they just take it, too. So, <laughs> And they did. But that's okay, too.
We want our Great Hall of Starnheim against uh, that card. I think we attack here with Berserker again. Then we play our Valkyrie the old-fashioned way. Ouchies. Yeah, I mean, um, Basalt Ravager is nasty. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not good. So we can weigh down something here, but... I mean, and I guess that is what we're gonna do. The Ravager hits the hardest, but giving haste to stuff is bad. I can block any of them. So I think going forward, because I can just block Basalt Ravage with my Berserker, it probably is better to kill a Cavalry. I mean, no matter what we do here, we're not in good shape, so... You know. We're now in a position where we kind of just have to hope they don't have removal, or we're going to get beat down. You know, this is one of my favorite cards in the set, but I've barely gotten to play with it. I feel like early in the format, people weren't valuing it, and I saw it a lot more. I have it in pack one, pick ones a lot, but it's like, as good as it is, I always see it in a pack where it's like, oh, well, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> so now if I block the Ravager, they draw a card. That's great. Isn't that great? Okay. Well... <laughs> Yeah, I think we lose this one. They were being a little greedy there, and maybe if we'd drawn something like relevant, it would have been it would have mattered, but because if I were them, I'd play Agar and attack with the Ravager, because the best I can do is block it and let you draw a card. But they probably have a removal spell, and that's what I mean by greedy. They're like, well, I'll use the removal spell and draw a card off that and attack them, but then you wouldn't have your assault ravager, you know, so. Oh, yeah, I mean, just having all this mana is doing a decent job of scaring them away from attacking us, I guess. Um, are you both warriors? No, you're a berserker. Darn it. Being able to block with both and then raise the Draugr would be nice, but... Ooh. I haven't had the misfortune of playing against it or the fortune of playing with Quakebringer. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're dead. <laughs> Drops us to 10. They're being surprisingly timid. Um, yeah, there we go. That's more like what I would expect. Yep, we'll go ahead and scoop. That was a sweet giant deck. Agar, Basalt Ravager, and Quakebringer. Of course, the Ravager's not really a giant payoff exactly, but... It's a great card that happens to be a giant. All right, so this will be our last game with this deck one way or another. Win or lose, since we're six and two. <sighs> okay, well, we got Fear's Retribution in this one. Okay. So if we could curve out and go Berserker, Pet... Retribution, that'd be great. We have to draw white mana to do it. But uh, that would be really nice if we could. We've had a lot of luck with it so far. Ooh, we're going to get to do it. Now, 
They don't have a whole bunch of mana, so that's good news in terms of trying to do it. Um, gosh, I guess I'm going to attack with my Berserker here. I think I want to actually play Goldmaw Champion. If we can draw a fifth land and go Retribution Kennel Master, and our opponent can't interact, they're going to be in trouble. So there's a chance that that's a counterspell. And that is something to keep in mind. Um, I do think we attack with both our creatures before we do anything else. So if that is a counterspell... There's a... I mean, it's not that likely. It's probably the common uh, Scry 2 draw 2. Yeah, I'm trying to decide if I, if I think it's enough of a risk that I should just play another Gold Maw. Yeah, we should probably wait. Don't think it's a counterspell now, though. <laughs> I don't know what it is if they didn't uh, use it. Okay. I like the looks of this, I think, overall. I think we just attack with everything here. Yeah, get that Reach creature out of the way. Sets up our uh, way down for a future turn. They may be able to kill the Angel here. Maybe playing Kennel Master last turn was just better, huh? Kind of feels like it might have been. All right, so let's play our Kennel Master here. Playing Kennel Master last turn would have been more damage, and, um, yeah, Broken Wings wouldn't have worked, but I think we made the right play, but, you know. That's the first time someone's managed to really kill our Angel, at least when we didn't have other Angels in play already, I guess. So that can't die to uh, way down, but we can tap it, so... That's probably okay. Alright, we've got them down to three. That means a double spell for an Infernal Pet can get us there. They do have way more gas than we do. Okay, well... That plan doesn't work anymore, huh? Hmm. That's pretty nice, though. So, Infernal Pet. Then, yeah. Then we'll weigh down. I guess the Reaper Death Touch isn't a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. This will give us lethal because of our champion. So, yeah, we definitely kill the Reaper. All right, we got to seven wins. There was definitely a, a luck a luck element here uh, that helped us get there because we got our retribution so, so much. But um, I think overall, you know, our decks, uh, our deck ended up being pretty good. Do I, th I mean, I think it's most likely outcome was probably like five, three, not seven and two, but um, you know, you have variants go both ways over the course of, you know, Lots of playing Magic, and uh, that time it went our way.